My name is Leanna Marshall, and I'm one of the Indigenous counselors here at Confederation College. Can you tell us about the program that you run? Yes. So I am part of, well, two teams. I'm part of the mental health counselor team, and I'm also part of the APIWIN team. Um, so an APIWIN, um, that's the Indigenous student lounge here at the at Confederation College and so there's me and Joe Wark who's also the other Indigenous counsellor um, and we work with the three Indigenous student navigators um, who just started work here last week okay. <laughs> and so we work together and just bring different program to the students and so my role it's really it's really casual so I offer things like ribbon skirt making workshops or tote making. Um, I also do uh, beading. Um, and so with my work with Walking With Our Sisters, um, if there's any events in the community that are happening regarding murdered and missing Indigenous women, whether it's like with Sharon Johnson's um, Film and Memory Walk or her Valentine's Day Walk, Last year and this year, we made skirts with students um, that they could have ribbon skirts that they could wear to those walks. And then with the bead work, I've done beaded um, hearts with students and um, to talk to them about walking with their sisters and what's happening um, in the community and just across the nation around issues related to murdered and missing Indigenous women. And so it's been really wonderful because with the beading, um, it creates, well, with anything, I think when you're making anything, it creates community. And I think my role here as a mental health counselor, and specifically with like looking through life through an Anishinaabe lens, um, being in an office like this has its benefits, but also being out in the community also has its benefits. And so for me, when I'm out in the community, making things with the students. To me, that's also mental health and spiritual health and emotional health and social health and just really trying to model that with the students. So there's no program name. <laughs> it's just kind of whatever, you know, if the students have a need that they want to learn something, it's like, okay, let's, let's make it happen. So either I'm doing it or I'll connect with somebody in the community who can help facilitate that. So for the ribbon skirts, um, we brought in Ryan and Shannon Gustafson and who are just like two of the most talented people in Thunder Bay in terms of how they, how they make their like their textiles and their beadwork. And so um, I really like to make the connections with the students and with community members who wouldn't normally be in an educational setting. Um, and then same with Sharon, with Sharon Johnson, like we'll bring her in and she can talk about her sister and um, her walks and just educate students in a different way um, versus, you know, us just talking at them. Like they're actually hearing things from, yeah, just from our community. I feel like our community here in Thunder Bay is really, there's a lot of really good things that are happening that are, that don't you don't necessarily hear about um, that don't get a lot of media attention or and I really like to bring those people in and just again to make those connections and to have the students understand there's other things happening in the community and that the community is actually really thriving. I see our community thriving and at very different levels um, but you don't really hear that with the media <laughs> and so the students here they like some of them are from Thunder Bay but most of them aren't like they're from like up north um, or from even down south um, and then also international students as well and so it's when you bring people from the community into the institution it's really helpful for the students to get a different perspective on what actually is happening versus what you see right <laughs> you know yeah, In the media so, and whatnot. yeah. so it sounds yeah. like a pretty like yeah overarching program yeah and yeah. you're kind of involved in a lot of like liaisoning and bringing people together and yes. bringing people into the institution yes absolutely cool. and trying to make like I feel like my role here it's really unique because like the students who 
they've been Thunder Bay. Like last week with everything that happened last week with the, with the violence and with the deaths in the community. Like it's like anything that happens in the community, it's going to impact our students. There's always someone or a group of people that are directly affected um, by the acts of violence that are happening. And so I feel, so I'll hear how they've been impacted in a counseling session. And because it's confidential, um, that information doesn't go anywhere. Um, but a part of, I think what makes my role unique is I can hear the stories, but then I can also directly ask, ask the students like, okay, what, what is it that you need say on the campus to make you feel safe or who do you need to connect to and so that's also driving how the programming that gets offered in Appywin or that I'm doing on my own happens as well so so it's really coming from from their own like their yeah. stories and what they need yeah but you take it and do and do what that in with that information what you can to yeah. create something out of it exactly that's beautiful yeah that's really cool yeah thanks so I guess the target audience, can you speak to that? Um, the target audience here well, are the students. So um, I primarily work with Indigenous students here, but it's not just Indigenous students. Um, so in terms of the age range, it's a community college. So I see students who are as young as, believe it or not, 17 years old, <laughs> all the way up to like 65 plus. Um, so that, but typically, um, and I'm really horrible with statistics and demographics, but it's usually like between like early twenties to like 30 is like probably the highest number in terms of age and, and mostly women, mostly women. What is the aim of the program? So the aim of the program is to create community, um, is to create, um, uh, like for me like being on campus is to create a campus where there's indigenous presence like within an institution as big as confederation college um, things can get lost and so i really believe in um, having events out in the student commons area um, right next to where Appywin is and to kind of create that community uh, that indigenous presence um, yeah what was the what was the, the aim Sorry. of the program? Oh yeah, so there's that there's that part, but then to create the connections with, um, with the students and yeah, to make them feel at home <laughs> and to make them feel comfortable here, I think is like the the biggest aim. Again, you kind of already answered this one. Uh, please describe some of the different activities in the program that participants are involved in. Yeah. So again, like ribbon skirts, um, a lot of just making things. Um, we do screen, like um, t-shirt making the students. Um, and that's that's really neat too. Like we have, we host an orange, the Orange Shirt Day event here at the college where we invite survivors of residential school to come and speak directly to the students. And then we do a t-shirt, uh, yeah, t-shirt build. And so we have a logo that was created by Skyler Wesley He's since graduated, but he designed a really beautiful logo. And so we still screen t-shirts and, and again, like a lot of the people who come to the event isn't just students, it's also, we're also educating faculty and support staff and international students. And so that's a really neat event to, to be a part of. There's also feasts that happen. We do a spring, a spring and a fall feast. Um, Elders come into the student lounge and, and do beading and gauntlet making and pretty much you name it, we try to make it happen. Um, we also host powwows um, and craft sales and those sorts of things as well. How would you or how do you measure the success of the work that you're doing and the programs that you run? Well, formally, I don't do anything. <laughs> I know that it's working when and I don't know if this is just like, I mean, I'm not a researcher and unless I get told that I need to do that, then I will. But for me personally, um, I know that it's working when I can go into Appywin and 
I know people's names and they know me and there's fresh smiley faces or when like even like there was a student that was here she was a student here for two years she graduated she now goes to LU and two weeks ago I happened to be in the hallway and she's like I need to talk to you and so we had like she never came to me for counseling <laughs> when she was a student here like mm-hmm. but I would always see her in Apuan and just say hi or whatever and um, make small talk mm-hmm. and but we had like this really great conversation she had to debrief something in her life that was currently going on at that time and so that's how I know that what we're doing here is working is that when people even when their students here and then when they graduate and they can still come back to the college and it's considered a place that is um, comfortable for them and that they they know the people it's familiar I don't necessarily want to say the word safe there's that's to me that's a really loaded question but at least it's a space that they can come and they're they're going to know the people they know that they're going to that that we're going to respond to them and respond to their needs the best way that we can. So that's how I know that things are working is that the students are coming and, and talking and yeah, just making those connections. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. From your perspective, what is indigenous education? Doing, doing stuff in community. To me, that's indigenous education. It's being, um, It's making connections, like, with one another, um, but it's also making connections with um, being outside, with being on the land. It's also making connections with ourselves and what that looks like, whether that's through ceremony or through other practices that people choose for themselves, um, but whatever that relationship is with yourself and Um, that spiritual component you know when I think of indigenous education I just think of our communities I think of our gatherings and I think of all the beautiful people and all the gifts that we bring and all that we can learn from each other so it's not a formal to me it's not a formal um, definition even though I work within an educational institution um, that's my personal perspective you know um, in terms of what I view indigenous education as being what do you envision indigenous education looking like in the next 10 years then language I envision what I would love to see um, particularly Confederation College leading in Thunder Bay is like a language immersion program I would love to have I would love to have people becoming fluent in this area there's we have so many strong speaker like strong speakers here in the community but there seems to be a disconnect in terms of the younger generations learning how to speak in Anishinaabe Moen and I think um, there's an opportunity for that to be filled by the college hopefully hopefully um but that's what i would love to see is um like full immersion speakers like imagine that like in a moment classroom within an institution like this that that would like blow my mind that'd be awesome right yeah okay so i'm gonna bounce back then because you're talking about language because mm-hmm. there's another question here that is specific to this. So what is your perspective on the importance of language and language revitalization in Indigenous education? Like my first language is English. I've listened to Anishinaabe Moan to Ojukri uh, my whole life because my mom is a language speaker. And now that I'm older, I know that that is a huge part um, that I feel like that's a huge loss for me because in our language that carries our teachings, our language is, uh, it carries so much about who we are as an as Anishinaabe people. And so to me, to see the revitalization, like the work that's happening, like for instance, say in Algoma University, um, the work that Patricia Nikowance is doing, um, and Laura Conwind, like in more, in more of an informal sense, when you listen to those teachers talk about the language, you really start to understand. And I feel like I'm just like scraping 
the surface here with my own understanding, but you really start understanding like how much the language is connected to the land, to how we view the world, to ceremony, to every like every facet that goes beyond like like the like what's happening in front of us it's like the language is is everything it's everything so i feel like yeah like it makes me excited to see and hear people learn the language <laughs>